So Tam, you're at an amazing place that I think most people don't know enough about MD Anderson. We've kind of seen it from the outside. Some of us may be trained there. Can you kind of encapsulate sort of what's the spirit of Anderson? What makes Anderson unique from your perspective as an Anderson surgeon? You know, Anderson has grown quite a bit over years. And I think the reason why it's become such a great place to work is the fact that you're all one big family. And it truly is one big family. Um, you know, it allows us to really put patient first when we, when we take care of patients. Um, there, it's been a very humbling experience, I think, um, being there taking care of, you know, cancer patients. But at the same time, I've, I have found it to be a true uh, privilege to be part of a great team. Uh, not only the surgical colleagues, but the medical oncologists, the um, radiation oncologists. Um, we really all kind of come together as one big team, and, and it um, does our patient great service. From the outside, it just seems like an amazing institution. And I've got to say it's one of the things I'd say that American medicine has really done well with places like MD Anderson. I think most other places in the country need to try and model after that. It's just challenging in today's socioeconomic environment, but you don't seem to sense that at MD Anderson. It, it is a very efficient place. Um, I'm sorry, you said you don't sense. You don't sense the socioeconomic struggles of medicine at MD Anderson. Yeah. I don't think. You know, I think we're lucky in a way that um, at least there's uh, no sort of um, competing interests within the institution among the uh, providers. Um, and um, I think Anderson actually has a great business office that actually um, is allow, you know, allows us to uh, be very efficient, effective, and um, even though it's a state institution, I, you know, I, I think the, um, the patients most of the time I think is well covered by, by their insurance. Um, and, you know, we do a lot of um, work for um, the county hospital as well. Um. Yeah, seems to work well for sure. The, the place, is, place is doing it right. Um, can you comment on vascular trials that maybe have been completed or ongoing or maybe future planned in terms of prospective trials? Because it seems like there's a huge role for that. You know, I've only been there for a few years and things um, don't go as fast as MD Anderson. Yeah, we've experienced that elsewhere. Uh, you oh. know, there, there's a, uh, I mean, it's a state institution, so there's a lot of paperwork required. And but, you know, I'm, I am hoping. You know, we just got on the VQI um, database. Uh, we are hoping to, um, you know, start more um, registry to start with. Um, hoping to, um, you know, um, start more clinical trials. You know, we have a current study where we look at the uh, ultrasound um, of carotid arteries in patients who have had previous radiation and um, hoping to um, find subtle changes preceding the sort of accelerate atherosclerosis that they develop later on. Specifically, I was thinking for DVTs and pulmonary emboli, it seems like that's a huge area. You've got lots of patients with that. It seems like something that really kind of begs for a prospective trial to say, how aggressive should you be? Is there a role for that? Could that be achieved at a place like MD Anderson? You know, see, so we actually just set up this um, it's a multidisciplinary team that I talked about in my talk and uh, where we convene different people from different disciplines and we're hoping to really come to more standardized protocol where we can actually, you know, look at things in a prospective fashion because currently, you know, the treatment is very varied among different disciplines. Um, I'm also excited, you know, I think, I think the reason why patients with cancer are more hypercoagulable is in part because of um, the underlying sort of cellular changes or molecular changes that we see. And I talked a little bit about this thing called NET, which is the, um, the sort of extracellular DNA network that is excreted 
by the activated neutrophils. And we actually are going to start collaborating with this laboratory that can actually do the assay for us. Because there's actually a treatment for that. You know, in cystic fibrosis patients, they get DNAs mm -hmm. um, treatment, and it breaks up that net thing. And so the treatment's actually available already. And if, if the data is confirmed that you have an increase in net production, then if you, the DNAs would break down that net network, then you can potentially reduce the VTE complications. Mm -hmm. Great. And then um, IVC filters. The use kind of goes up, goes down, popular, mm -hmm. not popular. Yeah. I'm under the impression that lots of IVC filters at MD Anderson and plays a big role. Is that still the case or is that shifting? You know, so we actually have a registry looking at the filter that we place. Um, and there's been some debate as to the type of filter, as you know, you know, should all cancer patients have permanent filter um, or sh what patient selection, what kind of patient population should we even consider retrievable filter? As you know, the data shows that there is a high incidence of retrievable filter complications if not retrieve. Um, and so we, we have a registry um, and we have a, a protocol set up for our patients who get retrievable filter to be called back so that the filter can be retrieved. You know, the current data I show is that, you know, the, there is no role for IVC filter, but, but, you know, in the indications that we've known over the years, you know, if they cannot be anticoagulated. But other than that, you know, um, there's really no data to show that filter is um, beneficial. Well, so Tam, it was great for you to come today. Thanks so much for being here at Methodist and sharing your experience at uh, MD Anderson. We greatly missed having you here as a partner, but enjoy having you as a nearby colleague. Thanks again for coming. It was my pleasure. Um, it's truly a privilege to come back to Methodist, where I train, um, and uh, and you know, have enjoyed our collaboration over the years. Thank you. Thank you.